got the queen right here. I'm gonna wash my hands. This property has been vacant for probably eight to 10 years and they intend to tear it down soon. It's got a beehive right down there under that window. Welcome back to the 628 Dirt Rooster channel where hobby beekeeping is a way of life. Today I'm an hour from dark in a high traffic area for homeless folks. There's at least two vacant sheds here plus this house. Obvious people been going through the windows and staying in them. Little baby doll back there and a mattress back there. Our bees are right here. So I've got my smoker going. I got this little thermosel sitting here to keep the mosquitoes off of me. And I'll show you a little bit of the property before I get started. There's an old cistern that's about half full of garbage. I got this shed here that People have been climbing through the window and homing up in. Of course, when I got here, I made all the racket I could, banged on the front of the house with a hive tool. Just in case anybody wasn't supposed to, supposed to be here is not hanging around. Tarp over a tent. Another bum camp over there. While I'm working on this hive, no earbuds, you know, keep your, keep your ears open to the surroundings and don't uh, put yourself in a position where somebody can come up behind you. So the old house is probably 120 or so years old, 140 maybe. Don't know exactly, but I'm just guessing by some of the houses that I know in the area that were built in the uh, mid to late 1800s and the the cistern and things like that this old asbestos siding everybody in the world's scared of it as long as you're really careful try to take it off in one piece as much as you can uh, some a lot of companies salvage this stuff especially in new orleans area they'll salvage it because there's you know you can't get this anymore i think you can get a comparable composite match for the stuff but you know this is somebody from here back could match the front because this is wavy a uh, wavy pattern on the front and then a flat cut on the back and then back to some dutch lap and i'm just going to expose a little bit of it i don't plan on trying to remove the whole thing this afternoon i've got lit literally less than an hour till sunset and i couldn't do this in an hour if i had good daylight so i'm uh, going to expose a little bit of it tonight tomorrow morning i'll come back and finish up I've known about this hive for some time. Uh, somebody else exposed it. I don't know if it was a beekeeper or a contractor or the property owner. They got a couple of bids on removal and judging by his reaction when I gave him a price, I'm quite certain I wasn't the cheapest, but since I actually showed up and seemed to know what I was talking about, uh, I got the job. So we're gonna do a live removal. We don't do any extermination as you might know. We'll see what we find in here. I see empty comb right now. Bees are being fairly docile. Uh, this has been exposed for a good while now because I'm standing on the asbestos they pulled off of it. It's covered with leaves. I didn't even know it was down there until I stepped on it and heard it crunch. Right now I'm just running bees out of the way so I can pull siding without getting absolutely tore up. So my whole goal right now is just to run the bees off of this side of the comb.
This old wood and old nails are sticking too good. There's no way I can save this stuff in one piece. Dust you gotta worry about. That. From what little bit I can see from smoking them off the combs, I think it's gonna be a pretty dry hive. I can see comb from the bottom to the top on this end, and it's all dry. It's it's got pollen in it. A little bit of, little bit of nectar. Uh, if we get lucky, we'll get some honey on this end. We're gonna get out of here and call it a day. They're getting pretty testy. It's a little too late to be working on them without suiting up. And you can tell by the sweat dripping off my head, it's too hot for that. There's somebody's walking slash protection stick right there. All right, before I get out of here on this one, I'm gonna talk to you a little bit about something that I don't hardly ever cover. And that is your safety on the job, not related to uh, the bees or anything like that, but related to other people. Right now I'm in a spot, and, and even as I'm videoing this, I'm aware of what's behind me. Um, a lot of homeless people pass through this area, and I'm not, uncaring towards the plight of the homeless people, but I've worked with them a lot over the years, trying to trying to help them, uh, feeding them, dragging them to church, whatever it might be. 99 times out of 100, they're on the street because of their own doing. Uh, drugs, alcohol, mental illness related to drugs and alcohol, whatever it might be, they've burned every bridge that there is, and that's why they're on the street. Some of them are there because of things that are, that are not in their control, but most of them are there because of one of those issues. And a lot of them have been on the street for a long time and know how to take advantage of people. And so you gotta be really careful around them. And I've, I've worked with the homeless a lot over the years and I know how to handle them, but at the same time, I'm also aware of what I'm dealing with. And there's been a, lately been a rash of homeless folks There goes two more right there. Uh, lately been a rash of homeless folks doing around here and you don't want to set yourself up to be a victim of something like that. So when I come to something like this, especially when I'm by myself, I'm always packing. You don't want to sneak up behind me. It might not go well for either of us, but it certainly ain't going to go well for somebody sneaking up behind me on something like this. Mr. Ed did sneak up on me on a job one time, scared the crap out of me, but uh, <laughs> I was in a pretty good area then and wasn't uh, thankful for both of us. I wasn't prepared for anything crazy to happen. But yeah, when you, if you're working on something like this, just be aware of your surroundings. A lot of, there's mattresses all over this place, in it, under it, around the back of it. Very recent evidence of dope and alcohol use right out here in the front. Don't ever let yourself become a victim just to get some bees or just to make a couple dollars because it sure ain't worth it. Uh, I, I guess that's really all I'll say about all that. But And then on the flip side, there's me and my brother 40 years ago. You know, people still live down here. It's still, it's still got its uh, nice families and good home sites, but there's a mix of unsavory as well. And I don't know I don't know when it got this way. It happened before I came along because by the time I was those kids age. All right, we're back at the crack of noon while it's smoldering hot to get started on this job again. It's overcast though, so maybe it won't be too bad. And we're in the shade on this side of the house. Yesterday, I kind of ended on a down note, I think. I feel like I did, talking about the homeless issue. And, and it is a problem down here. It's been a problem as long as I've been around. Back in 1984. Mr. Ed just called, wanting to know what was taking so long. He said he could have had this one clean in a half an hour. 
better get on it. It's making me feel bad. I got a little bit of different temperament than yesterday. I already got stung once just bringing tools back in. And once again, vacuuming, so I gotta smoke them. Had somebody recently asked me, am I still mite checking swarms and feral colonies? Mm -hmm. I am on on uh, kind of a hit and miss, not checking them regularly, but occasionally I'll check one. This is after the flow, after the main flow, about three weeks after. Once I've got about what I feel like I want, I dump all this in the lid and then put my strainer in and then transfer it all back. They're, they're pinging me pretty good, so I'll stand over here waiting for you. <laughs> real sweaty and they go through my clothes pretty easy when I'm sweaty plus I got pheromone all over me from stinging my wrist and forearm. Is the honeycomb any good or not? Yeah. Well, something like that size. Is there still this one queen or is there a broth? Uh-huh. still this one. Just one queen. Here's some edible honey. It's all edible. Yeah. Shake the bees up. 
like you see the little like the hives that you see. So this would be like one or two. This would be a uh, double box, pretty much. Double box or just a, 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 a you take a box and you have the things inside of them, right? Yeah, there's ten frames in the box. Okay. In each box, each box is nine inches high, so if you double that, okay, this would be about two deep. Two deep, two boxes, so 20, yeah. 20 racks. Two deep box, yeah. Then how often do you harvest it? You can do it a couple times a year. Okay. So you got like all this right here is drone brew. These are all males that are that are in a pupa cell. Okay. Uh, this this whole piece of comb here has got a lot of pollen in it. A little bit of nectar down here, but that's a lot of, a lot of that's empty. Okay. All this dark cap right here is female uh, bees being born or are going to be born soon. So pretty much everything you see here is females. Okay. The males are a little bigger they don't have stingers what i'm doing here is a mite wash i got about roughly 300 bees in here and alcohol and i shake them up and, and separate the mites from them and see what the mite load looks like on them so, so you don't affect another colony or uh or what's the mites yeah sort of people some people are afraid of it and a lot of people claim if you don't treat your bees they won't survive <laughs> <laughs> all right i've been shaking for a couple of minutes now totally untreated wild colony i didn't get a single mite in that shake there's a couple little pieces of trash right here and what looks to be a bee leg right there but uh, not a single mite in the cup. That's, that doesn't tell you that there's zero mites in this colony, but there, if there are any, it's a really low count. Got a little bit of nectar and pollen. Good pollen cells in it, but otherwise it's empty. A little bit of honey right here. Pollen on this side. All this brood like this, as bad as you hate to lose it, that's a pain in the butt to frame up. And then when you frame it up, it never lays out straight and they cross comb it real bad. So I don't even save this stuff. I'll start them over from scratch.
queen. Ready? I'm gonna wash my hands. right there. I'm sure she still is. I'm just not seeing her for the bees piled up on top of her. She didn't seem to be in a hurry to get anywhere, but I don't see her now. There she is. Make sure I didn't miss her. I got everything in the clip that I grabbed around, but I wanna make sure she didn't run out the side. Yep, she's in there. And that's how you get the queen. Just slowly, methodically remove combs be real careful, look as you go, and then she'll turn up eventually. Usually, way in the back, hiding in a hole somewhere. You can see where she was, hiding under the end of the combs. I've been smoking over here and running everything that way, and she's running away from danger. So that's where she ended up. So I'll set her right here for the time being. Get back busy vacuuming and cutting combs. Pulling some drone brood to see if I see any mites on any of them. There's a mite right there. You see it crawling around. Not many though. That does it. I'm done packing tools up, getting out of here. I done heard from everybody but JP today. Mr. Ed called me, gave me a hard time because I wasn't working fast enough. Yappy gave me, called me, gave me a hard time because I wasn't working fast enough. Marshall called me, kind of mean bees, but that's all right. They were there near mite free. I saw a couple of high beetles and that was it. Probably sucked up one or two in the back. And I uh, saw a few more. That was it. That's a healthy colony. Been there a lot of years. Just from the looks of the comb and how much propolis. Check out all the propolis on this wood. I've been there for a minute. Still got my queen up here. I had to come back and get her. And a tool bucket. 
We're ready to go. Walk over here and see if anybody's living over here now. Or if they've just trashed the place and left. Suitcase and some junk up in there. Shoes and clothes. Hey, look at here. Camping out under a fruit tree. Dang, somebody have been living at this one for a while. That's quality camping right there on a plastic pallet, a couple plastic pallets, a bed frame to hold up your house, hold up your roof. There's our job right there. That's it, we out, go home. Put these bees up. Get some rest. Maybe edit a video. <laughs> funny down here how how many bum camps there are and old dilapidated structures with people just living in them trashing them they're not livable um, I guess somebody living in them I guess they are livable they're falling in can't get the power turned on on them city don't do anything about all that but you buy a tax lien property and let the grass get high or anything like that and they are all over your case sending you notifications to cut the grass or if you don't do it they're gonna have it done and charge you for it it's ridiculous but they don't do anything about this trash you just saw apparently uh, that stuff been there for a good long while and it's, a lot of it's in plain sight so it's not like they're they just ain't finding it One good thing about jobs like this one, not a lot of money in these, typically. Somebody's gonna demolish a house. They're not gonna spend a whole bunch of money to get the bees going. They don't care what kind of damage you do to get to them. And they're, they're not gonna be doing any repairs, so it really doesn't matter what you do to get to the bees, they just want them gone. They're not gonna pay a lot of money for it. But on the flip side, they ain't gonna call you back because you left a dozen bees. They're not gonna call you back the next day and go, there's a big pile of bees and you say well send me a picture and it's a dozen bees hanging out on a windowsill or something that's the upside so these these jobs i don't mind too much like i say you don't make a lot of money doing them but uh it's fun uh, especially getting one on the ground like that this is a mr ed job you know i don't see many of these all of mine are overhead in a soffit 25 foot up <laughs> it feels like anyway and all these ones where you can stand on the ground and get to them in the chest high he gets a lot of those i don't know how he finds them all but i don't hardly ever get those when when i get one i'd almost do them for free just to do an easy job i'm introducing them to a new box now this is just what i dumped off the bottom of the lid that's what's in that basket There's 
starting to walk in. That's an empty box. It's got fresh waxed foundations in it. There's plenty of ventilation. I won't be locking these in. Come out here and check on them in the morning. If they're mostly in the box, I'll leave them alone. If they're piled up on the outside, I'll swap boxes real quick, smoke them in and lock them down. But we're in the heat of summer right now. I don't really like to lock them down this time of the year. If I do, I usually do it in the shade right in the wide open right here. So I'm gonna see if they'll stay. I'm not leaving the queen caged up because if they don't like to set up, they'll leave and just leave her in the cage. Normally I would shake them in, but I don't need the catch bucket right now. I don't have another cutout schedule for a couple of days. They seemed comfortable where they were, weren't moving fast enough for me, so I shook them all down, make them start moving. As they start climbing back to the top, they'll be looking for somewhere to go. I'll tell you how little my wife pays attention to knows of thinks of me. She gets in the truck and sees this sitting on my console. I took a second sample from that last cutout just to check results again. And she goes, I don't know what you said. Is that urine? <laughs> and I said, Yes, it's urine. <laughs> It's alcohol. I'm not convinced. <laughs> yeah. Here, smell it. It's okay. 1984. I was 14 years old. Just got my braces off. And my mom was taking us to Taco Bell for lunch one day. And back then, my dad had a body shop just a few blocks south of here. And it had an apartment in the upstairs of the shop and we had lived there for uh, like a year and a half at some point just prior to that so me and my brother really you know we knew this area real well we used to run the streets and even back then the homeless problem the drugs and alcohol and all down here was really pretty bad but uh, I don't remember if we were still living there at that point but uh, back then Taco Bell was just two blocks over it's not there anymore but we get we went to this Taco Bell two blocks over and had lunch and after lunch we go back to the shop and my mom goes son where's your retainer and I, I was like oh man I must have left it on my tray at Taco Bell so me and her get in the car and go back to Taco Bell and go see the manager hey has anybody turned in um, a retainer no dice you gotta go to the dumpster because since y'all been here we already dumped all the garbage on it oh man much to my relief we get out back and it's one of those short dumpsters with the slope front and it's pretty full, so all, and all the latest trash is right on top, of course. So we didn't have to actually get in the dumpster. We're still, we're still digging through everybody's lunch garbage, tearing open these sacks that are right on top. A uh, little dumpster corral around it, you know. And uh, we're busy digging, looking through napkins, shaking stuff out, seeing if we can find this retainer. And we start hearing this noise, this, this hollering, this man's coming in the alley and we hadn't really noticed him until he started screaming and hollering, but he's screaming profanities at us. And, uh, you know, I looked up to see what's going on. He's looking straight at us and he's got a knife out with a blade on it about like that. He's pointing it at us and he's screaming and 
and uh, I don't even know what he's saying. I just know there's a lot of profanity going on. My mom's standing here next to me. I'm not even looking at her. This guy's got my attention. And I'm 14 years old at this point. Uh, I'm a big kid, pretty good athlete, really big and strong for my age. And you know how all you guys at 14 years old, you were bulletproof, nothing could hurt you. You were jumping off the house. You were doing stupid bicycle and skateboard stunts, you know, stuff that would just, uh, you'd, you'd be having joint replacements if you did any of that today. But at 14 years old, nothing can hurt you. But also at 14 years old, I was, uh, I wasn't a mean kid, but I was a tough kid. And, and I really, I excelled at sports. I was into football. I was into karate at that point and lifting weights. I, my dad had got me uh, on with a weight coach when I was 11 years old because he, you know, I was like, I liked football. I was good at football and he got me started lifting weights. So, uh, you know, I'd been lifting weights for a few years at that point not with a coach anymore, but just we had a had some weights set up in our uh, rec room, or, or, and I would lift weights every day. So I, know I was following Schwarzenegger and all those guys. I was gonna be the big bad guy walking around us. That's, that's where my mind was at that point in my life. But this guy's coming at us with a knife and he's cussing us out. And I don't know if we're in his dumpster or his alley, his territory, whatever it was, or if he was just crazy, but he's coming out coming down towards us and he's about probably 60 or 80 feet from us at this point really rough looking guy probably in his 30s uh, grown man probably about the same size I was uh, but you know lived a rough life and it just it went all over me and it just it flipped a switch in me and immediately I was furious my adrenaline was pumping this guy coming at me is just something different uh, coming at me with a knife like that. I look down at my feet and there's a piece of a two by four about two and a half foot long and I reached down and grab a piece of two by four and I took off around a dumpster in a full sprint toward this guy. And he's, uh, we're making eye, eye contact as I ran the dumpster and I see his face, just this hateful look in his eyes. And he looks down at that board in my hand and looks back up in my face and sees probably the same look of hate in my eyes coming towards him uh i mean just in a full sprint and decides in just a split second he's in the wrong place and he turns around and takes off the other direction uh you know knowing he's either outmatched or out crazy and probably don't want to figure out which one it is uh so i'm hot on his heels and i can hear my mom screaming uh hollering for me to come back but this guy's got my attention and my adrenaline's pumping and I'm fixing to club him to death with this little piece of two by four. And so I chased him, I think almost to the end of the alley. I really can't remember at this point. A, a car came by, he runs across in front of the car and I, that's when I broke off and went back. And, uh, you know, looking back, it's funny now because I'm 14 years old. I'm a pimple face, baby face, if I'd have, if I'd have caught him, who knows what I'd done with him. I ain't ever hit nobody with a stick before, and I might have just got myself knifed. So I'm, I'm thankful I didn't catch him. I'm thankful I just caught his bluff, and he got away. And I wish knife guy the best. I hope he was doing good at this point in his life, if he's even still living. Um, you know, if I'd have caught up to him, I might not be here to tell the story. But at, the, you know, at the time it wasn't funny. But looking back, it's really really pretty humorous so anyway you know because we're at 14 years old we're real killers you know <laughs> just got my braces off i'm a killer uh, anyway that's the story when we're done here i'll see if i can't round up a homeless person to get a story out of it. <laughs>